Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the CSTV Bullet. I'm your host, Kathleen Iglaozoto, Madam CS, and this is the striker. Stay tuned and have it true and chill. For all the returning subscribers, we highly um, appreciate your support. And those ones who are actually are first timers in this particular channel, welcome to the CS um, TV. Here we analyze things um, in their raw and real form. Kindly remember to subscribe, like, and share this particular video. Also, leave a comment, tell us the next video that actually you want us to do. Now, uh, in today's striker, well, looking at the political fiasco in the country, you know, we have had a lot happening. The DP, that is, Ligadi um, Gashawa, uh, was in Vichy the other day while I, he was at the hospital. And then on Sunday, he had his presser trying to tell the world what was happening, how disappointed he is with the presidency, etc. On the other hand, we had Kituke, uh, Kidiki, Kiture being um, uh, uh, nominated as the DP. Within one day, he was verified by parliament. And it was, uh, it was set actually to be sworn on Saturday, why it's not that the court halted the process. So there's a lot of things that are, are actually ongoing. And today, I want us to look at why um, Kindiki is the best um, choice, always the best option for President Ruto as the deputy president has at the moment. So, um, you know, uh, the Professor Kindiki is not a new name, actually, in Kenya's political sphere, especially uh, right from the election year in the period of 2022. This is a guy uh, who was first uh initially was supposed to be the deputy president and when you look at the politics and what the politi some of the politicians in the kenya kwanza government have been saying is that number one um this position of the deputy presidency was not supposed to go to the gati Gashawa. majority of the leaders or majority of the politicians in kenya kwanza actually wanted kindiki to be the deputy president However, the president himself, that is William Samoy Ruto, did not want actually at that particular time to work with Kindiki. He preferred Ligati Gashawa. So for me, I'm like, for um, the people or the political leaders already in Kenya Kwanza had their own reservations against Ligati Gashawa. They never liked him right from the word go. And here is the deputy who is the only person who was supporting Ligati Gashawa. So as far as the Kenya Kwanza government is concerned, and as far as the cohesion within those leaders is concerned, I think Kidiki is the best option because he was the people's choice right from the beginning. What President Ruto was looking at at Gashawa at that particular time, it is a, it's a, it's, it's a discussion we will have for another day. But for number one, for me, number one, why Kindiki is the best um, option for uh, President Ruto is that number one, it was the people's choices. Uh, number two, um, you realize when you look at the career of uh, Kindiki and when you look at the career of Ligadi, there are two different careers. And actually, from where I stand, the position of a deputy, whether it's a deputy governor, whether it's a deputy uh, president, needs an administrator like somebody who is more of a human resource you know somebody who has been in the career outside the political sphere because the presidency is typically a political position then when you have a deputy who is also a politician trust me you you will by the end of the day collide because there's political interest there's economic interest you know so many interests will have to collide but when you have a human resource or when you have a person coming outside the political career as a deputy, even look around the governors who are enjoying good relationship with their deputies, you would realize that either the governor is a politician, but the deputy is more of a human resource, is more of a manager. And that qualities, those qualities were lacking in um, Rigati Gashawa. And I explained this. When you look at Rigati Gashawa, and uh, President Ruto. First, we must accept that these two were students of President Moi. You know, they worked with President Moi. Uh, when you look at um, 
um, regarding, it even served as a deal during the time of President Moi. And remember, during President Moi's time, a deal was like these people were more of politicians, you know. These are the people who are executing uh, the, the policies and everything that the president actually needed. And then from nowhere, regarding a shower, just moves from a deal and then comes, gets sympathy votes in Madira after the death of the, of the brother and he becomes a member of parliament. He did not actually stay there for long. Then he moved from a member of parliament to a deputy president. So literally, and then when you look at President, uh, president Ruto, he's been a politician all or through. For those ones, when you look, we go back to history. This is a guy who has been a politician right, right from his um, Kamba's days. And then comes to 1997, wins for the first time in, um, in Nandi as a member of parliament. He, like, he's been a politician. So he's never been in this, like, let me say, career that has to do with really management, dealing with really people, with really policies, etc. So when I look at this, where the conflict between these people comes in is that both of them want to campaign. Both of them are like in political mood. And actually, when that is the case, then the common citizen Ali in the Anaumia. And um, because both of them are the politicians, it becomes very difficult to control what they say. That's why you could see Nigadi Gashawa says these are government of shareholders. And sometimes you cannot blame him because politicians come out and say anything. And um, you could not see the president coming to tell him don't do that. Because by the end of the day, you would ask maybe the president, are we not politicians? When you want to say somebody is like this or like this, why when I say like this, you don't want to do what? You don't want to accept. So that is the second option, the second reason that tells me Kindiki is the best option for Ruto because this man has had a career in the teaching world at the university level, research and teaching, etc. So when he's coming down to that particular position, in as much as it is more of a political position, he's coming with the mind that actually, you know, there's some there's how policies are supposed to be translated from you know, political manifestos to implementation. And I think this is what um, our Ricardi actually missed out. And when you look at it, actually, um, in terms of him missing out, it takes me to position number three, like the third reason as to why Kidiki is going to, is, is the best option as as at now. Of course, one of the petitions that were put in the, um, during his impeachment motion was the politics of regionalism. Yes, you know we are supposed to see a president, a, pre, a deputy president, who is a symbol of national unity. My students of history and um, other historians will tell us that there is somewhere we talk about national integration, and some of the symbols of national unity that we have in this particular country is the presidency. You know, and um, the presidency in this aspect even incorporates the deputy, and. Uh, Ever since they entered into government, I think for those ones who watched the matriculation of um, the uh, the inauguration of uh, President Ruto and the deputy, you could sense there was one problem with the deputy president. Right from how, one, he, he was um, doing his swearing in. You know, he was always ahead. He was ahead of the person, of the magistrate, all of the church who was swearing them in until they had to, you know, halt and then continue for him to come and be at the same pace with the, with the, with the magistrate. At the same time, when he took that particular mic to speak, of course, we call him a truthful man, and he's always called himself a truthful man. But, you know, it was like um, the, the opposition people, all the, their political rifles during the, the 2022 elections, like, the, still the enmity continued. If we want to understand that actually, there's an electioneering period where we can tell each other anything, and there's a time now you have taken over, you have won, where you're supposed to sit down and decide how are you going to move forward as a country. So you realize that the moment he took that particular position, he forgot to understand that I'm the deputy of the Republic of Kenya. Instead, he became the deputy of, you know, it became a deputy of a section of people. Even when he's talking about Mount Kenya, uh, the Mount Kenya or the Murima thing, 
I don't think that he's talking about the entire Murima thing. Of course, he's been talking about Musibuze Murima, you know, milk, coffee, tea, all those things, which from where I stand is not a bad thing because he comes from there. But he forgot that Kenya is made up of 12, over 50 million citizens, and these people come from different regions. And even we have like the Indians who, some of them who have an Indian descent from India. So he forgot actually to become the president of the people. And for me, when you tell us that um, a deputy president can go to Nairobi, a metropolitan city, and start speaking in Yekoyo, it loses it. You know, not every um, trader in, in Nairobi is, is from Kikuyu land. He's, he's free to speak his language. We, we, we promote our local cultures. We promote our la local languages. Because in history, again, we say languages give us identity. But your identity also ends where other people's identity starts from. Your freedom of speech and expression, your freedom to celebrate your culture, etc. ends where other people's freedom and cultures begins. So what the, pres the deputy president actually forgot? He forgot the fact that he's the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. But when you look at this other guy, Kituke, Kiture Kindiki, ever since he took over as the CSET, this man has been, you know, it's been, uh, I can say, very wise. Even when we had, you know, these clashes happening here and there, of course, by the fact of the position he holds, he was able to transfer to different places in this particular country. And from where I stand, I think he understands the needs of this country, I think, more than um, most regions in this country, more than uh, President, uh, Deputy President Rigadi. So that one is also another reason as to why I feel uh, the politics of regionalism that uh Rigadi was pioneering actually uh killed him on a life war as far as the president uh, the deputy presidency um is concerned uh number four why i think um kindiki will be the best um option for president uh, ruto um is because um now kindiki knows his predecessor was impeached and one of the reasons that this guy was impeached is because number one, he always opposed his, um, his post. We saw during the GNC presser how the president comes out, calls GNC the criminals, terrorists, and then we see the deputy going to call them sons and daughters. And you know, these are people who are supposed to read from the same scripture or from the same script. And um, so Kindiki already knows number one. Uh, the moment I, you know, the moment I will, um, you know, mess up with this guy, I will be easily, I will easily face an impeachment. But you know, in that particular case, then there is a problem for Kenyans. You know, when the deputy and uh, when the deputy is going, for example, to power down and uh, do everything the policy says, and remember, right now, like we kind of not, we kind uh, don't have a solid opposition then it means like there's a very high probability that maintaining checks and balances in this government is going to be very difficult and uh, Kitu, uh, Kiture Kindiki is likely to be saying yes 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 because he doesn't want to face the fate and the shame that uh, uh, Deputy President Rigadi Gashawa has faced you know we have seen a very a man who is humiliated a man who even the wife is crying actually on camera. We we have seen a terrified man for the first time, you know. We've seen a man who is even says saying, deal with me but don't uh, deal with my children, you know, leave me alone. So I think the presidency that the president has set as far as this position is concerned, anybody who's going to fill that particular position actually will have to bow down before him. And you know, follow is whatever he does, whatever he says. He says, A, you have to do A. Because if you don't do that, remember, Kindiki is now an appointee of the president and not an appointee of the people. He may be a popular candidate for the Kenya Kwanza leaders, but he's not a popular candidate for the common citizens because he was not at the parrot in 2022 when we were going for election. So he's an appointee of the president and a popular candidate among the Kenya Kwanza leaders who are supporting the president. But to the citizens, is not. So he's coming to that presidency. There's no political party. Another mistake that actually um, the big Gashawa had done. 
He has no political party. He's an appointee of the president. And therefore, whatever he's going to do, he has to bow down and actually uh, listen to what the president is saying. Because when you look at it politically, he has very little that he's bringing to the table in terms of thoughts, you know, in terms of the manifesto that they had, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government had, in terms of even the support in terms of political parties, like can we even make a coalition? He doesn't have a political party. So when you look at his own political party, so when you look at all these things, you realize that yes, it's the best for Ruto because he's likely to be a man who like follows him and doesn't uh, conflict with him a, a lot. But again, that's going to be a disaster to the Kenyan citizens. So uh, those are my opinions concerning why I think, as far as the current situation is concerned, why is um, DP, um, the, current, the nominated candidate for the position of a deputy president actually, uh, um, Kiture Kindiki is the best option for Ruto as compared to Rigadi Gashawa. What are your opinions? Do you think Kindiki will um, perform or will actually um, uh, uh, meet the expected standards? Do you think he's going to uh, to, guide, to help um, and shape the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, manifesto, etc.? Do you think actually Rigadi Gashawa was the worst candidate or was not the best candidate? Your comments down below and uh, kindly remember to subscribe, like, share and comment um, uh, on uh, this particular uh, uh, video. Bye-bye and uh, see you later with another interesting video.